to today's episode of Cheap Shots, four more 24 millimeter lenses examined. I'm telling you, you're in for a couple of surprises today. You know, last year I put together my first comparison video examining performance of four vintage 24 millimeter lenses in a few different real world scenarios. If you haven't watched it, check it out. We looked at the SuperTac 24-35, a TX mounted Vivitar made by Tokina, and the well-regarded Olympus OM 24-28 and the lens that many felt really won that battle, the Minolta 24mm f2.8. Well, this time, I've got four more vintage 24mm lenses, and for the sake of continuity, I'm going to compare them to that same Minolta lens that really did great. I picked up all these lenses at bargain prices, but even if I'd paid full retail, the four new ones I'm looking at today are less expensive than the Minolta MD 24-28 that won the last battle. And, believe it or not, as a surprise twist, I'm even throwing in a vintage zoom into the mix. Let's meet our contenders. First up, that zoom lens I was just talking about. It's the same vintage as the MD2428 that's so well regarded and purported to be a Leica design. But, can a vintage zoom compare to a vintage prime? Especially an older one that goes all the way down to, F, uh, all the way down to 24 millimeters? Well, we'll see. A little bit about this gem. It's the Minolta 24-35 f3.5. Vintage collectors are well aware of the 24-50 Minolta wide-angle zoom. It's highly regarded and covers a very useful focal length on both uh, full-frame cameras and APS-C cameras as well. But this one is a little less well-known. While it doesn't cover quite as large a focal range, it's slightly faster and at a constant f3.5, it's a small lens, very compact, not much bigger than a fast 50. It replaces a 24, a 28, and a 35. In its day back in the early 80s, this was an impressive lens. But conventional wisdom says anything that's a vintage zoom lens from the early 80s is going to be subpar, right? I can't wait to see for sure. The next lens in the lineup is a CPC Phase 2. I picked this guy up for about 10 bucks, a real bargain for any lens that's in good shape, and this one is. Some believe that CPC Phase 2 was a Pentax white labeled brand. Um, I'm not sure, but if you have any history on the manufacturer or thoughts on who you think it may be, let us know in the comments. Like the others, this is a small lens, 52 millimeter ring, uh, filter ring. It's a total wild card. Uh, I haven't tried it before, and I couldn't find any reviews on it, so we'll just have to see how well it holds up against the name brand competition. Next up, we've got a pretty well-known gem of a lens that was manufactured by Comine for Vivitar. Uh, also, a 52mm filter thread. It's an improbably small lens that gets all the way down to f2. This particular lens came to me as part of a lot of Nikon gear. And from what I could tell by checking prices online, they probably sell for about 100 bucks. It's still a bargain compared to a modern, fast, wide-angle prime. There are probably at least two versions of this lens out there, one made by Chiron, the other by Comine. Uh, each purportedly has their own merits. People think one is better than the others. Knowing how Vivitar uh, used both of those manufacturers as well as Tokina to make a lot of their greatest lenses, I'm not surprised that that's the case. A lot of keyboard connoisseurs swear by this lens. Let's see how it behaves in some real-world shooting opportunity. Finally, the only 24mm I actually sought out to buy on purpose. If you can't tell from my channel, I like coming across lenses in my travels and trying them out. There's a small handful of lenses, though, that I've used at some point or another and found them to be such good performers that I try to keep them no matter what I'm using. You may have heard of the Sigma Super Wide 2 24mm f2.8. I love that lens, and I love this lens even more because this is the rebranded sibling, the Quantare Tech 10 24mm f2.8. That's right, the Quantare 24 is the same as the Sigma and can often be found even cheaper. Imagine that, a sleeper lens that has a less, less well-known rebranded version. I call that a deep sleeper. I ran across this lens in an autofocus version when I shot Pentax DSLRs back, well, I guess it was probably around 20, oh, 2008. I couldn't believe how good it was. When I switched to Nikon, 
it was a no-brainer to pick up as one of the first uh, lenses I got in that system as well. And it had the benefit of being cheaper than virtually any other 24 millimeter autofocus Nikon lens out there. I was pleased when I discovered there was a manual version of this lens and I owned it for a while um, when I was getting into manual focus. But eventually I sold that version as two and replaced it with the current specimen, which is in perfect shape. For less than $40 on eBay, will it hold up against some of the more expensive lenses from first party manufacturers? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's find out. Here we have a nice architectural shot example. This is a historic mill and a 2.8, uh, I'm sorry, 24 millimeter f2.8 quanta ray, which if you've uh, watched my other video on 24 millimeter lenses, you'll hear me say that this is the lens that I always own. Uh, so here on the left hand side, I've got that lens. On the right hand side, I have a no name brand. It's called the Phase 2 also 20, 24 millimeter f2.8. So looking initially, you can see a fair amount of vignetting on the Quantare side. Um, if we zoom in into the middle of the screen, this is the point of focus for me. Uh, you can see they're both very, very sharp. Uh, maybe the Quantare is slightly warmer in appearance. If we start to move over into the uh, second third of the screen still pretty sharp on both sides i think this uh, phase two is really holding up well and here i'm looking at the cones the orange cones you would start to see that the quantra is holding up but the uh, phase two here is starting to get a little bit blurry a little muddy uh, especially here in the extreme corners a uh, good example of this uh, would be look at the difference between the bark on this tree between these two examples. Now let's compare the Quantra. Again, this is wide open f2.8. Let's compare it to our next lens, which is the Vivitar Quantra here on the left, also at 2.8. Uh, the Vivitar is an interesting lens because it stops all the way down to f2. And if we look at it at f2, you can see quite a bit more vignetting. Um, it's, it's kind of an ethereal, ghosty, uh, uh, rendition. Uh, at 2.8 it gets a little bit better and these are both pretty uh, sharp lenses in the center. In fact, maybe the Vivitar at 2.8 is even sharper. However, if I start to move down again toward the extremes, you can see the Vivitar maybe not quite as sharp. If we uh, move into the corners, Again, big difference here, it's, you know, just a really, really big difference here in the corner. So the Vivitar sharp in the center, not nearly as, as sharp in the corners. And this is a really interesting comparison. On the left hand side, we've got again that Quantare. On the right side now, we're adding in the Minolta MD 24mm f2.8. For those of you who watched my previous video on 24mm lenses, you'll know that this lens was the top performer compared to um, three other uh, lenses that we looked at. This is a very interesting comparison to me because I know this Minolta is a top performer. This lens goes for several hundred dollars. This Quantare here on the left hand side I picked up uh, for about 40 bucks. Let's uh, zoom in to the center. Again, you can see this Minolta very, very sharp. Not surprising. I might give it a, a little bit of an edge. Again, maybe slightly cooler. If we go down into the corners, into the extreme, you can see that here the uh, cones are also very, very sharp. Uh, in the absolute extreme corner, though, I think the Quantare is really even stronger. You know, look at the difference here could just be focus a little bit or, you know, again, the Minolta looking pretty good in the lower left corner. The upper right corner, though, I think I had to give it to the Quantare. So you can see upper left corner, very, very equal lenses. In fact, if I look at the Quantare, let's get it down to, you know, um, F11. And on the right side here, let's look at the Minolta Prime at F11. Both of these just super, super sharp. 
Um, I think the Quan Array though is even even sharper here in that upper right corner. Hard to tell elsewhere. You know, in the left corner, lower left, I think they're very, very equal. You, know, you can see that Quan Array is doing a great job, not so much aberration either. All right, so I'm going to go back to f2.8 on the Quan Array, and on the right side, I'm going to show um, our next lens. You can see that there's vignetting on, on both of these wide open. Uh, but the lens on the right here is also a Minolta lens, also at 24 millimeters, but this is a pretty rare zoom lens. It's the Minolta MD 24 to 35 millimeter. Many of you have heard of the 24 to 50. This is the 24 to 35. It is a small lens. It is not much bigger than any of the other primes. Um, but how does a vintage zoom hold up to one of the, you know, a, a top performing uh, vintage prime? Well, pretty darn good. I, I think, again, compared to that Quan Array, which I'm calling sort of the winner in this test so far, um, very, very good. Look at the lack of aberration and the tightness on this antenna here. You know, as we scroll down, you could really see some detail in these rocks. If I zoom out, you know, not much more distortion, nothing terribly visible. If I zoom into the corners here, look at that. This is wide open. Now, it is a 3.5 lens versus a 2.8 lens, but wide open, I think those cones are even sharper here. Maybe not quite as sharp in the upper right corner. Uh, but I think this is the lens that gives that Quantare the most run for the money in the very, very extreme. You know, lower left, maybe not quite as sharp, blurring out a little bit on the lower left, but um, that is an impressive showing for a vintage zoom lens. Now for this test, I want to take a look at some of the macro capabilities. How close can these lenses focus? And three are in the same range, and one is different from the other. If you remember, it's like Sesame Street. Which one is different from the other? And there is a clear difference here. We have that Quantare. Um, I may have mentioned before, it's it's a Sigma-made 24 millimeter f2.8 branded Quantare, which was an old Ritz camera store brand um, and on the right hand side we happen to have the phase two and just before i zoom in this is a, the major difference between these two lenses and quite frankly this quan ray and every other competitor i've shot with it gets close this is one of the reasons why um, i always keep one of these around you can see razor thin depth of field at that uh, at that distance both of these are shot wide open the Phase 2, it's a no-name brand. It's cheapy, but it's, you know, nice and sharp, even wide open. Has a pleasant rendering, but very, very different between the two. Let me just mention this next lens is very, very different. This is the Vivitar F2. And none of the other lenses get down to F2, which I think is an important consideration. It's pretty soft, but it has a very special rendering almost ethereal. Bringing them both to f2 is a little bit more of a fair comparison. Again though this Vivitar looks like almost like that phase two. We could zoom in but just a very very big difference. Nothing wrong with this um, with this Vivitar lens but it is just different. Next lens that I want to look at here on the right side is going to be the Minolta zoom wide open. This one doesn't quite, this is probably the farthest focusing, but look at, you know, not that big of a difference compared to. So here it is, wide, little vignetting, but, but very nice uh, rendering lens. Look how nice and sharp it is in the middle. All right, 3.5 gives you a little bit extra depth of field. This nut up here in the upper right is starting to come into, um, into uh, focus. And then our last uh, item to look at is the Minolta Prime Lens. So again, this is on the left-hand side, a you know $40 lens on the right-hand side, a couple hundred dollars, 
and you know even though that Minolta is a great lens it's nice and sharp in the middle uh, no contest in this particular matchup I'm gonna take the Minolta down to f8 to really show what it looks like you know it gets rid of all that vignetting much much more is in in focus uh, on the left hand side I'm going to do the same with the Quantare uh, again zooming in you're going to see super super sharp on the Quantare you're going to begin to start to get some little more depth of field but the Minolta again sharp across just major major difference in how close these two lenses can focus On the left hand side we've got that Minolta Prime f 2.8 wide open and on the right we have that Minolta Zoom uh, f 3.5 also wide open and I'm just going to start with the general scene here comparing them pretty similar see some vignetting um, you see again I, I lack of contrast to a degree but um, in the scene itself which I think is, is sometimes helpful my focal point was again middle of the frame looking here the roof of this home and maybe a little bit sharper maybe a touch more contrast here on the zoom side which again is just absolutely flabbergasting to me um, a little bit more detail on the siding of that house uh, comparing I mean they're both really sharp in the center of course but that zoom is just incredible in terms of its performance in my opinion as we move toward the uh, a third of the way out from center still seeing really good contrast here looking at the uh, some of the molding work you can see some detail here um, you know look at the bricks on the zoom side versus the prime side uh, I think the zoom is still, if anything, sharper even into the corners at infinity in the distance. Um, you can see a tiny bit sharper maybe here on the exhaust pipes out, out there. You can see, look at the detail in the bridge, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more detail on the zoom side. Um, and I think it, it, it holds up here toward the edge. Um, and toward the corners here maybe the, the prime is a little bit uh, tighter here it could be you know decentering something along those lines but uh, the the prime in the left hand side looks a little bit stronger to me in the extreme corner the zoom looks a little bit stronger to me in the extreme corner on the right hand side next lens I'd like to again compare to this uh, Minolta prime on the left hand side which was our winner in the previous review that we did the Quantare now again Quantare since it's a Sigma originally it was rebranded Quantare to be sold for Ritz camera these are incredibly cheap uh, because of that Quantare lenses are typically not that great but the Tech 10 varieties um, are rebranded pretty good third-party lenses and this is an outstanding lens I think the if anything the Quantare a little bit a uh, little bit better contrast here in the foreground I'm going to zoom into the uh, focal point here you know it's, it's hard to tell like the others maybe you have a touch more contrast on the Minolta side as we move out into uh, toward the edges um, I think as we get even to the corners I, I feel like the Quantare wide open 2.8 to me it's sharper right, look at the difference here look at the difference in the detail on the exhaust pipes here to, on the roof the Minolta was a top performer in the previous um, test in the corners wide open it was still sharp but I think the Quantare is even sharper let's look on the left hand side Again, look at the difference in the bricks and even in the extreme edge I have to give it to the Quantare what an outstanding performance by that lens that is a bargain lens that outperforms we're gonna look at the Vivitar again same kind of eerie ethereal wide open look stop down to 2.8 much sharper like before sharp in the center 
and the other tests it did not fare that well in the corners and you can see as we move out to the edge I'm starting to see degradation um, significant here big difference and in the extreme corners you know not even close clearly the same on the left hand side and you know if we needed to get this Vivitar to the same here I'll, I'll put it in here at F um, 5 6 it then you know overtakes the Minolta uh, at 2 8 so I mean again the Vivitar if you're able to stop it down a little bit not a bad lens uh, on the right hand side it's it's maybe not doing as well even at f11 on the right hand side you know you're still not quite as good as the Minolta is wide open again that's why I have to look at these on a um, case by case basis uh, left side's better than right etc etc now um, I'm going to be looking on the right hand side um, at the phase two this was the cheapest lens you know wide open here's the cheapest lens of the bunch 10 bucks compared on the left side to the most expensive lens of the bunch unless you start pixel peeping not a whole heck of a lot of difference there and even if we do pixel peep in the center of the frame very very close basically the same in my opinion detail holds up in the first third may even be slightly better on the face too really holds up all the way until you get into the extreme corner and that's where the Minolta takes it over maybe even sharper than the Minolta but once you get to the extreme edge the Minolta is, is tough to beat if we went to the phase two here it is at five six um, you know maybe there it, it, it finally catches it so unless you have to shoot wide open even the um, phase two gives you some really good uh, corner corner sharpness uh, here it is again at five six you can see it's really sharp um, on the left hand side I just want to just for, for the heck of it I'm gonna put the Vivitar up yeah you know the Vivitar is the one lens that just doesn't give corner to corner sharpness it does get down to f2 but it just doesn't give you that corner to corner sharpness even at f11 but I'll tell you I bet the quant array if we brought that in um, again here's that quant array um, at f2.8 on the left hand side um, versus that phase 2 at 5.6 if we brought the quant array down to 5.6 you'll see that it is you know darn sharp so phase 2 great lens for the on the cheap as well especially if you could stop it down uh, quant array in my opinion best of the bunch So what does it all mean? First off, I'm blown away by the performance of the Minolta zoom lens at the wide end. The fact that it zooms up to 35 millimeters makes it like carrying three primes in a package that's not much bigger than one. The CPC Phase 2 is compact, sharp in the center from wide open, and I think just a dandy lens if you come across one at a good price. The lens really sharpens up as you stop it down, but it's still very usable and one I would buy without any hesitation. The Vivitar opens up to f2. In the old days, this would have been a boon because lenses stopped down before shooting and the wider aperture made for a brighter viewfinder. Stopped down even a little bit, it becomes very sharp in the center. Unfortunately, it never really sharpens up in the corners, even at f11 or 16. Does the Minolta Prime hold up to as the top performing lens of the eight I've tested? Well, it's sharp to the corners, even wide open. It deals with flare and glare well and it has a pleasing rendering with good contrast and color. If I could keep just one, I give the nod to the Quantaray or Sigma Super Wide 2. This lens is just a beast. It's sharp corner to corner, even wide open, just like the Minolta. The close focus capabilities. It gets down to 1.4 macro, and that's something that these other lenses just can't touch. It's like having a whole other lens in your bag when you bring it along with you and the others simply just can't do that. So in addition to being one of the best lenses in terms of sharpness, having good character, decent contrast, 
the macro capabilities really take it over the top. This is the Vintage 24 to get. I realize that I came in a little biased to start with, and as always, remember, we're dealing with vintage lenses here. That means condition and sample variation can contribute to these results, so take them with a grain of salt. Adapters are different, though in this case I shot most of these except for the Vivitar and Quantre with the same adapter. They were all Minolta uh, mounts. Yes, I'd love to try some night course. That's primarily what I collect, but I simply haven't come across any in my travels at the 24 millimeter focal length. And I hear that the Canon FDs are great too, but hey, who says we can't have an episode three of these Vintage 24 comparisons? Here's my ranking. First off, if I had to keep one, it's the Sigma Quantre, as I mentioned. Then, of course, the Minolta MD24 f2.8. Third, if I'm just looking at pure results, I give it to the Olympus OM24 2.8, but just barely edging out that Minolta 24 to 35 f3.5 zoom lens. After that, there is a Tokina made Vivitar that was in Vivitar TX mount. It was great very sharp from the center, very unique and interesting rendering. It's a toss-up between that one and the CPC Phase 2 24 that I looked at this time around. They're both great lenses uh, once they were stopped down just a little bit. After that, I'd have to rank the Vivitar Comine at f2. It's a great lens. It could get down to f2, but never really sharpens up in the corners. And the Super Tacmar 24mm f3.5 never shot, sharpened up in the corners either. Even in the first third of the frame, it wasn't that sharp. Interesting rendering, though, and there's a place for it in your kit if you like that vintage look. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Cheap Shots. Please like and subscribe if you appreciate the effort and would like to see more of these real-world comparisons. Now get out there. Take some great cheap shots.